And for my next trick, um, today we're going to be doing binomial radical expressions. Um, so we're going to be, instead of multiplying and dividing, we're going to be adding and subtracting and um, rationalizing when we add or subtract something in the denominator. So our question we're going to be answering is how are adding and subtracting radical expressions different than multiplying and dividing the same expressions? So we're going to add and subtract expressions that have the same root. So um, just like when we talked about simplifying and multiplying, they have to have the same root. Same is true for adding and subtracting. And we're going to simplify radical expressions and combine like terms. All right. <clears throat> so what is the simplified form of each expression? 3 square root of 5x minus 2 square root of 5x. Um, in order to add and subtract these, the indexes and the roots must be the same. So this must be the same as this. So just like if we had um, 3x minus 2x, we subtract the 3 and the 2 and we get x or 1x. The same is true for this one. We take 3 square root of 5x minus 2 square root of 5x, and we get 1 square root of 5x, or you can just write it as square root of 5x, and that's an x. 6x squared square root of 7 plus 4x square root of 5. Can we combine these two? Well, our roots are the same, but um, our radicals are not. We have a 7 and a 5, and we can't simplify either one of those, so we can't combine these, the radicands. All right, 12 cubed root of 7xy minus 8 fifth root of 7xy. What do you think? Well, these also have different indexes, so we can't combine them. Even though what's underneath the radicand is the same, the 7xy, they also have to have the same index. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and combine these if you can, and if you can't, just leave them like they are. Pause the video, please and thank you. Alright, so for the first one, um, we have the same radicand, but different indexes, so we cannot subtract these. So, this is the simplified form. The other one, we have um, same, same, so we combine 4x and 3x, and that makes 7x square root xy. And the last one, these are the same, so we subtract 17 minus 15, so that's 2 fifth root of 3x squared. Alright, get it? Pretty, Im pretty simple. I was going to say simple and easy at the same time and it came out simple. That was fun. Alright, architecture. In the stained glass window design, um, the side of each small square is 5 inches. Find the perimeter of the window to the nearest tenth of an inch. Um, give me one second and I'll pull up a picture for you. Alright, so here is a picture of a stained glass window. <clears throat> it says that the side of each small square is 5 inches. So how many of you remember from geometry? If we have a square, um, sides are 5 this is a right angle. These two angles are congruent, so it's a 45, 45, 90. Do you remember how long the hypotenuse is of a square that's 5 inches long? Well, if, if it was, say it's just x, 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 the length is x square root of 2. So that means this side is 5 square root of 2. So that means this one, 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 and this one are all 5 square root of 2. Sorry about that. Um, so there are 10 sides, when you add them together, there are 10 5 squared to 2. So we multiply 10 times 5, so that's 50 squared to 2, and then it wants to know to the nearest tenth of an inch. So you're going to go ahead and put that in your calculator. D squared of 2 is 70.7 inches is the perimeter. Alright, 
What's the simplest form of the expression? Okay, now your first thought when you look at all these is, oh, I can't add these together because they don't have the same radicand. Well, if we can simplify first, a lot of times we can add together. So let's simplify the square root of 12. Well, the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 is 2 square root of 3. The square root of 75 is the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, which is 5 square root of 3. And this is considered minus 1. So I have 2 plus 5 minus 1, all with a radical 3. So I can combine these. So 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. So 6 radical 3. That would be your answer in simplest form. Okay, what about this one? The cubed root of 250 plus the cubed root of 54 minus the cubed root of 16. Go ahead and see if you can simplify this one. Is there perfect cubes that go in? Um, cubed root of 54, that should be a, you know, a ringer in your bell because we did this in the last lesson a couple of times. Um, so a lot of these, if you can figure out what one of them is, it'll help you figure out what the other ones are. Um, so look for patterns. So cubed root of 125 is 5, cubed root of 2. Cubed root of 100 or of 27 is 3, cubed root of 2. Minus cubed root of 8 is 2, cubed root of 2. So all of our radicands are the same. So 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. So 6 cubed root of 2 is our simplified form of that expression. All right, when we multiply, um, what's the product of each rational expression? All right, so if you notice, um, if when we multiply these expression, we are multiplying two binomials together. So what, how do we multiply two binomials? What process do we use? Well, we use the FOIL method. So we're going to multiply first, outer, inner, and last terms. So first terms, 4 times 5 is 20. Outer, 4 times 4 squared to 2. 4 times 4 is 16. Inner, 2 times 5 is 10. And last, um, so I have 4 times 2, that's 8. And square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce this and say this is 8 times 2. And 8 times 2 is 16. So I have 20 plus 16. Together that makes 36. And I have 16 root of 2, 10 root of 2. Add that together that makes 26 root 2. So there's your answer for multiplying those binomials together. Oop, one too far. All right, why don't you go ahead and try this. 3 minus square root of 7 times 5 plus square root of 7. Please pause the video, write it down. It won't take that long. All right, so when you do your foiling, you get 15 plus 3 square root of 7 minus 5 square root of 7 minus square root of 49. And square root of 49 is 7. So I have 15 minus 7. That leaves me with 8 and I have a positive 3 and a negative 5, that makes a negative 2 squared to 7. So 8 minus 2 squared to 7 would be your simplified answer. Alright, we also need to talk about rationalizing the denominator. So we did this before when we made perfect whatever our root is. So perfect squares, perfect cubes. Um, but in this one, we're going to have a difference of squares. So we have two different roots and in order to rationalize our denominator what we're going to do is multiply by the conjugate. So instead of uh, instead of square root of 5 minus square root of 2 we're going to multiply by square root of 5 plus square root of 2. And we're going to treat these like two binomials that we're going to foil um, so we're going to multiply those together. And what you do to the bottom, you also have to do to the top. 
so that you keep um, balanced um, a balanced expression because what we're really multiplying by is one so we're not changing the expression uh, what it actually is, we're just changing how it looks, changing its form, because we don't like to have square roots in our denominator. So we're going to FOIL. Um, let's go ahead. Well, we'll do the top first. The top is easy. So we have one number times two numbers. So we just distribute. So square root of uh, three square root of two times the square root of five plus three square root of two times the square root of two. So we have the same indexes, so we can just go ahead and multiply these together. So 3 square root of 10 plus 3 square root of 4. We know square root of 4 is 2, so we're multiplying 3 times 2, which is 6. So I'm going to write this over here. 6 plus 3 square root of 10. And we can't simplify square root of 10, so I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, that was for our numerator. So now we need to do our denominator. So we need to multiply square root of 5 times square root of 5. That's square root of 25. Um, outer plus square root of 10. Inner minus square root of 10. And last, minus square root of 4. So when you multiply by the conjugate, you always create this where your middle terms cancel. So plus square root of 10 minus square root of 10 going to cancel every time. And that leaves you with two perfect squares on the front and the back. So square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 4 is 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So we have 6 plus 3 square root of 10 over 3. Um, now can we simplify this even more? Well if you look at all of your coefficients here, all of your coefficients are multiple of 3. So we're going to reduce them all by 3. So we get 2 plus square root of 10. And this is our most simplified answer. And it also rationalized our denominator. All right, for this one, what are we going to multiply by in the numerator and the denominator? We have to multiply by our conjugate. So we're going to multiply by square root of 3 plus square root of 5. Okay, let's go ahead and do the top first, multiply these. So I have 2 square root of 21 plus 2 square root of 35 over, I need to multiply these, square root of 9 um, minus square root of 15 plus square root of 15 minus square root of 25. So those middle terms cancel just like always. Okay, we can't simplify anything in the numerator, so I'm just going to leave that as 2 square root of 21 plus 2 square root of 35. In the denominator, I come up with 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Now you'll notice that all of our coefficients are a multiple of 2, so we're going to go ahead and divide everything. Since I have a negative in the denominator, I'm going to reduce everything by negative 2. So I get negative square root of 21 minus square root of 35. And that would be our most simplified answer. Okay, why don't you go ahead and do this one for your lesson check um, and then compare this with your partner. I want you to do this first thing before you get started on your worksheet and have a great night. Don't forget to do your homework. Okay, bye!